I want you to think about your most effective teacher. The most effective teacher you had, it could have been elementary school, high school, college, grad school, whatever. Someone who taught you things that were really important to them, important for you to know. Now I want you to think about how they taught you. Did they declare things in a big thundering voice, brook no discussion, this thing is important, go do it. Probably not. <laughs> I don't think most of us find that method of teaching terribly effective. We don't find it compelling. What I say is important because I said it. I don't think the Torah is convinced that's the best method either. This week we read how Jacob is growing old, he's nearing the end of his life, and remember he's living in Egypt with Joseph and all the rest of his sons. They moved from Canaan, they had a horrible famine. Jacob feels, he knows, his time is near, even at the beginning of the Parsha. He calls Joseph to him, just Joseph, and he says, do not bury me in Egypt. When I die, take my body out of here and bury me with my fathers. And Joseph goes, okay, dad, sure, no problem. I'll do what you say. And Jacob says, Hishav Ali, swear to me. Joseph swears. Short time later, Jacob is lying on his deathbed. He gives a final speech. Blessings to his sons, very famous blessings, kind of weird blessings. And he ends this speech by saying, I am about to be gathered to my kin. Bury me with my ancestors in the cave in the field of Ephron the Hittite, the cave of Machpelah, facing Mamre, in the land of Canaan, the field that Abraham bought from Ephron as a burial site. And there Abraham and his wife Sarah were buried, Isaac and his wife Rebekah were buried, and there I buried Leah in the field in the cave in it, bought from the Hittites. And as soon as he finishes this instruction, Jacob dies. And it makes you wonder, why did he have to give that instruction twice? After all, he already told Joseph, don't bury me here, bring me to my father's. He didn't even just tell him that. He made him swear. He shav Ali, swear to me. And swearing an oath in ancient times was serious business. They believed that if you swore something and you didn't follow through, there were life-ending consequences. So you didn't promise something in that manner unless you meant it. So why did Jacob need to go into this whole Megillah the second time? Oh, there's a field and there's a cave. My grandfather bought it from this guy and he's right there. My grandma... I think the instruction, don't you dare leave my body in this foreign land when I die, I do think that was very important to Jacob. But I think he was trying to communicate a lot more than that. Because if it was just that, just the instruction, then just giving the instruction to Joseph would have been sufficient. Don't leave me here, bury me over there. That instruction answered the question, what? What do you want us to do with your body? But it didn't answer the why. Why is this important to you? Why that place? Why that place and not this place? That instruction didn't explain what he valued, why it was important to him not to be stuck in Egypt. So when he had all his sons gathered around him, he told them the story. Not just bury me in this place, swear to me, but rather, there's a cave in a field in a place called Machpelah, which is near Mamre in the land of Canaan. That's where we're from. And your great-grandfather Abraham, he bought that field and the cave in it from a man called Ephron, who was a Hittite, not of our people even. And it wasn't a gift, it wasn't a loan. No one can take this back because we own that land. We own that cave, that field. Your great-grandfather Abraham, great-grandmother Sarah, they're buried there. Your grandfather Isaac and grandmother Rebecca, they're buried there. Your mother Leah, she's buried there. It's important to me that I am buried there too. 
in this cave that is ours, that we own, that belongs to our family. This is a value that I hold very dear to be buried with our family, with the generations who came before us, with our ancestors, who were your ancestors too. His speech to his sons, the story, so rich in detail, it says so much more about what's important to Jacob and why it's important to Jacob. More than just making Joseph promise to do an action. And clearly Jacob thought so too. He thought the first time he explained himself, even though he did get Joseph to swear, I promise, I swear, to do the thing you want me to do, it wasn't really teaching what he wanted his son to know, what he wanted his son to learn about what was important about being buried with his ancestors, why family was so important to Jacob, and how that needed to be important to his sons as well. So when he gathered them, he told them the story, and then he lived that value. We are all passionate about the things we care about, and that's good. We should be passionate about the things that we care about, things that are important to us. Sometimes, or sometimes often, the best way to communicate our values, what's important to us, isn't through stern commands and declarations. It's through illustration, through explanation and example, through stories. Jacob was clearly passionate about being with his ancestors. In death, he wanted his sons to know how important family was to him and by extension should be to them as well. He wasn't wishy-washy about his feelings, about what was important. He simply realized that thundering, swear to me, wasn't going to get that across. Wasn't going to get across the value of what was important to him. I have spent, literally, I did the math, half of my life teaching. I've been teaching in some capacity for half my life. I love teaching. Most of that time I've spent teaching kids between 3 and 15 all sorts of ages. When I'm trying to teach a Jewish value, say, welcoming guests, I don't just say, you gotta, you must, it's important, you have to, be welcoming to guests. Because ultimately, that doesn't teach them why it's an important Jewish value. It's not compelling to them. It doesn't show them why it's important. It doesn't say why it's important for them. It's not so likely they're going to listen to that. I say, we have a value in Judaism, and it's called Hachnasad Orchim. Our ancient rabbis learned it from Abraham and Sarah in the Torah. They had a tent that was open on all four sides. So when travelers would go by, no matter where they were coming from or where they were going, they could come in. Abraham and Sarah would bring them into their tent. They'd let them rest. They'd feed them, give them water. So that even today we know it's important for us to be welcoming to guests too. And then I would usually do an activity where they would kind of practice that, welcome each other as guests and hosts. I've always found that to be more effective. And I think that whether you're teaching kids values or making your values what's important to you known to other adults, the same method applies. Instead of big, thundering declarations, demands for immediate acquiescence, immediate agreement, Jewish tradition realizes the importance of taking the time to explain yourself clearly, calmly, to tell not just the what, but the why and then to live that value as the best way to get that across. It's much more convincing, and it's much more kind, too, I think. And we certainly could use a lot more of kindness in the world. Shabbat shalom.